Welcome to the School of History at the University of St Andrews. My name is John Hudson, I'm head of the School of History and also Professor of Legal History in the School. We're one of the largest gatherings of historians in Britain, indeed probably one of the largest gatherings of historians in a single university in the world. We've got areas of particular strength but also very broad coverage. One of the things that you will find here is that you will meet people or be taught by people who you will have come across previously, be it on television, be it in your reading, and you'll be finding how they work and how they can encourage you to work. So if you've seen Professor Rob Bartlett on the television talking about the Normans or the medieval mind, or if you've listened to the radio and heard Professor Ali Ansari talking about modern Iran, you will know some of the people that you're going to meet here. But let me assure you that you will have equal contact with other, maybe less familiar, but equally inspiring names. One of the things St Andrews prides itself on as a university is its intimacy and its communal feeling. And you'll find this within history as well. You'll be taught often in tutorials in the rooms of your teachers. You'll get familiar with their surrounds. And that will increase your sense of connection something that is furthered by our arrangement into certain departments of medieval history, modern history, Scottish history and Middle Eastern history. These are housed within particular buildings, giving you familiarity with a wide range both of academic staff and of your fellow students. And all of this is set, of course, within a historic town, with the medieval history department in a building, the earliest rooms of which are the 15th century, in the modern history department, which is appropriately the 19th century building, and with some of the Middle Eastern history being taught within the New Arts Building, a creation of the 21st century. Some of you may not have done any history for the last year or two at school. You may be wondering whether this will disadvantage you. We have no requirement in our first year courses that you should have done history previously. And a lot of you will be wanting to find out about areas of history that you certainly haven't studied before. A great mass view, I suspect, will have largely concentrated on 20th century history and therefore it will be useful to you, interesting to you, to move back to the 16th and 17th century or even earlier to the 8th to 10th centuries. And therefore those of you who haven't been doing history at higher or A level will realise that in terms of knowledge you are in fact no way behind those people who have been studying history at school. During your first two years, you'll be taking a variety of sub-honours courses, both in history and in other subjects. These will be taught partly by lecture and partly by tutorial. One of the great advantages of our mass of historians is that we can teach you in small groups, tutorials normally being probably about six people. At honours level, that is your third and fourth years, we offer an almost unparalleled range of options from the 4th century to the 21st century, from Fife and St Andrews to India and beyond. And this again is one of the great advantages of you having the opportunity to be taught by leading researchers on their subjects. We also offer people teaching within a wide range of joint degrees. So we've had people doing medieval history and psychology or Middle Eastern history and international relations. You may wonder what people go away and do with their degrees after they've been in St Andrews. Where does a his degree in medieval history or history or modern history lead to? Well, there's a huge range. One of the things we pride ourselves on is the employability of our students. A large number get sufficiently inspired to go on with further historical studies. Others, perhaps wanting to earn rather more money than we do, enter professions, be it in finance, law or other similar areas. But to say that any particular direction would be misleading. We've had journalists, we've had diplomats, we've had lawyers, we've had people working abroad and of course we have a highly cosmopolitan group of students, some of whom return to their own countries but many of whom will continue working across Europe and beyond.